all year. They've shot 47% in the first half. West Virginia, 45%. They, they shot 42% in the first half. It's kind of like a golf score. Anytime, uh, anytime you shoot 50% from the line, chances are you're going to be behind. And here's a case where uh, I would like to say that pitch shooting good enough to lose. Well, it's interesting as we take a look at the standings right now, and there it is. Villanova's king of the hill right now with a 7-2 record in the conference. Duquesne, Rutgers all tied for the second spot. Pitt trying to sew up that fourth home court advantage spot so they can start the tournament right here at the Fieldhouse, February the 26th. George Washington with an outside chance. St. Bonaventure cannot host because of their agreement coming into the league this year. West Virginia still with an outside shot, and Mass bringing up the rear. Let's take a look at the uh, total picture, and uh, Tim Gregorich has been building a program here. He came in with a with a career mark of 52 and 58, coach, but he's uh, he's 15 and 8 this year and building. Eddie, I'll tell you, he's a fine young basketball coach. He's got a lot of quality. He's got a lot of depth, and Pitt has a lot to look forward to in the coming years. By the way, we might mention that West Virginia's Gail Catlett ranked eighth in the nation among college coaches in winning percentage, with a winning percentage of 72 percent, and that ain't bad, my friend. I don't mean to harm on it but you know it's kind of something new for Gail Catlett at this point in time in the month of February he all he's usually batting battling for national ranking uh, you know with those years at Cincinnati and on and on as you know Eddie that's why he'll jump on you when you talk about his record because he's not used to losing but there we go next week on Wednesday, Villanova right here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. That's the reason the pressure is on Pitt to win today because they got another barn burner against the, the top dog in the league right now. You made an interesting you made an interesting point, and of course, the Eastern 8 Network is going to have Pitt and Rutgers on Saturday, Ooh. and GW is at UMass. I want to get back and see Daryl Strickland. He's All something right. special, and you know something? He lights up that Rutgers Athletic Center like a Christmas tree. Well, at dinner last night, Jack Simon was telling us that he threw in a Holy Ghoster in the garden. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how long it was, but he sent it into overtime. Well, what he did is he threw it up there from about 30 feet and then dropped to his knees and prayed, and then I understand that O'Corin for North Carolina came over to him and said, nice shot, Strickland. Well, speaking of Eastern 8, Eddie, we're <laughs> sitting right here on a barn burner 29 27 ready for the second half tip off and the regular starting 10 are back in the lineup for both teams there will be Clancy Ellis Neverson Wallace and uh, Rosovich for Pitt and they get the tip and we'll take a look at the five for West Virginia in just a second. Free is at one guard. Number 11, Lowe's, everything more for West Virginia. Nance, Todd, and Collins will be on the line. So there's your there's your top ten out on the floor right now for West Virginia and Pitt. Rosovich is tied up, and he gets away. Hello! Not a bad, not 29, a bad move 29. for a freshman. We've got an excellent look at the turnaround here in the lane. He's going to play a lot of basketball before he leaves Pitt, too. There's an excellent move. He lowers the shoulder right up to the hoop, has a chance to complete a three-point play. I wonder if we have John Travolta watching along our network. He'd like those moves by Brasovic. I'll tell you, Eddie, this young man's only a freshman. Gail Catlett's a little concerned. He's blocking our view here. <laughs> we can't tell him <laughs> to get out of the way, though, can we? I'll tell you, Brasovic is only shooting 29% from the line, but he shot well on that one with a three-point play. Foul inside. You know, I get a kick. We're, talk we're talking about the, uh, the quality of the league and so on and so forth, and it's only fitting that West Virginia and Pitt be in this league because you throw out all the record books when they play. Olinger and Neverson now both have two fouls. Make that Wallace and uh, Neverson. Neverson committing that one, his second of the game, of course. Collins. Oh, Clancy all over him. That's one of the very few mistakes you'll see Cl Sam Clancy make. And here's a good look at that mistake we're talking about. Frizz sets up the uh, pass perfect, gets it under to Collins, and there's the one fake, and Sam very rarely ever leaves his feet like that. He's well drilled. Our people had the opportunity to uh, see him play in the Pan Am games, Eddie. They said he was just fantastic. Nance loses the ball. They'll fight for it now. Neverson gets it over to Clancy, and Clancy with the big claws is not going to let anybody get near it. We've got a 30-29 to 29 score. Pitt in the lead. We're less than a minute into the second half, so lots of basketball left. Stay with us. Almost a foul there over Ellis. Ellis is now fouled by either Todd or Collins, and we'll take a look at it. That brought the pit coaches up. Uh, I remember uh, the assistant coach, Cleveland Edwards, playing at Pitt, Eddie, uh, my years. He was an outstanding guard for him. 
Well, you know, we said they had trouble. West Virginia with the fouls against Rutgers. Collins now has two as he committed that one. Todd has two. Jones has two. Moore has two. And Nance has two. So we're going to watch the West Virginia foul situation as Ellis shooting 72% tolls the line. That's his 11th point, Ed. It looks like he's going to hit his average today. 18 points a game. Mr. Sammy Ellis out of McRae, Georgia. Ever been there? Yeah. One time, I think I filled up my gas tank. <laughs> In other words, on the other end of the sign, it says you just left. 32-29, three-point lead for Pitt. 1905 remained in the game. Lowe's Moore. Boy, they box him well, don't they? I tell you, he's about 90% of their offense. Lowe's Moore. He's been their leading scorer in about 11 or 12 ball games this year. So what you're saying, they got to find him early. Yeah. Foul over the top. I think it's on Clancy. That's two quick ones on him this half. How many does he have total? He's got two. Two fouls on the big man, the bread and butter man for Tim Gergerich's Panthers, who are 15 and 8 and looking to wrap up that fourth home court advantage spot in the Eastern 8 playoffs that began February the 26th. Hopefully, right here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, Duquesne has wrapped up their spot at the Civic Arena. For our viewers out there, you saw Coach Gergerich hold two fingers up in the air. He's changed the defense now because Clancy's got two quick fouls. He's going back to his 1 2 2 zone. Yes, sir. They can't afford to lose him. 1830 remains in the game. Patient West Virginia. Lowe's more. All right, we're off and running. Pitt with a basketball. Never, son, has it knocked away. What about the fine hands of Lowe's more on that play? A good look at the way a fast break should be run, with the exception of controlling the ball. There's the break out, there's the perfect line, and there's the good clamp on Lowe's Moore. Got his hand on the ball and knocked it out. The back line. Pitt pulling away, 34 29. Vosovich with a fine jump shot. Collins! Look at Clancy. Clancy! They definitely have him on the ropes at this point in time. Eddie, a field goal here could open the door. Hello, 34-29. Pitt with a five-point lead. 17-52 remain. Oh, Clancy! They call that, that's why they call him Sam Bam, I guess, huh? Oh, boy, he can bust the door open, and uh, Gail Catlett says he wants time to think this one over. It's called momentum. 17-44, left in the game. 36 for Pitt, 29 for West Virginia. We'll be back in just a moment. Fred, will you go to bed? It's after midnight. You know how I am before a trip. I can't get to sleep, and I took an aspirin. Aspirin? That's for headaches. You need a sleeping aid. Like what? Like Compose. There's some in my dresser drawer. Headache? Take aspirin. Sleepless night? Take Compose. C-O-M-P-O-Z. Taken as directed at bedtime, Compose helps make you drowsy so you can fall asleep. Compose at drug counters. To some people, the Audi 5000 is a good example of a fuel-efficient five-passenger German car. But according to the fuel economy sticker, your government requires on every new car sold in America, this six-passenger Pontiac Bonneville offers better estimated city gas mileage. And according to this sticker, the Bonneville is priced $3,700 less. Is it possible that Pontiac is the real efficiency expert? Coach, I'll tell you, we're two minutes and 16 seconds into this second half of action. West Virginia has yet to find any rim or net. Well, I'll tell you, it's a very critical time for them, Eddie, because this is the largest lead in the game, seven points. Pitt's got the fellow that they call, uh, I think you brought him with you from Los Angeles, Momentum. I'll tell you, Mo is something. When he gets going and comes into your house, boy, he can oh. slap the devil out of the opposition. Mo is something special. And they Momentum, got that, we're talking. They got that pit cheering section over there on the ball, too. And, of course, Jack Simon got a good look at Tim Gergerich changing the defense back again on the monitor. You know what those fans for the Panthers call themselves? Noise for the boys. <laughs> All right. 36 <laughs> 29. That West was... Virginia still has not scored as Ellis comes down with a rebound. 17-15 remain in the game. Dwayne Wallace. Foul over the top. Ellis knew it. He's coming back down court. Ellis has picked up his first foul. There's a good look at the uh, jump shot and the foul. And... Uh, an interesting point was just made, incidentally, from the truck, Eddie, that West Virginia is starting to press a little bit out of their range on that jump shot. 
This is a critical period for them. They could get blown out in the next two or three minutes if they're not careful. Hello, 17 minutes exactly remain in the game. Seven point lead. Pitt, West Virginia has yet to score in the second half. They have not been at the scoreboard in the second half. Freeze, misses, Collins with a rebound. Oh, they call it foul number three. Foul number three for Sam Clancy. Our young viewers out there, watch the way little Joe Frizz comes down that lane, goes up, takes that good shot. Collins with a rebound, and of course, Clancy with a rejection, but he got him with the lower part of the body, Eddie. That's fantastic camera work, fellas. Thank you. Oh, TPC, the best around. Five team fouls now, three on Clancy. West Pitt has five team fouls and missed the second half. I think he lost some of his strength when he got his hair cut. Hey. Sampson could do it. I guess he can do it, right? But I tell you, West Virginia has yet to score in the second half. They finally get it. 36-30, the first point for West Virginia in the second half. 36-30, Pitt with a six-point lead, and 16-45 remain in the game. Hello, glad you could join us. Eastern Eight basketball, the best two hours around. West Virginia's back in the man-to-man, -man, Eddie. Sam Clancy with a miss, but Brasovich, hello. They count the bucket. No, they don't. Offensive foul on Brasovich. Tim Gergeridge is on right. I'll tell you, it was an excellent call by the official, incidentally. Brasovich is up. He just lowers the shoulder and goes down into him. And once again, it's a good thing that we are in the conference today because uh, Tim was close to a technical that time. Well, I'll tell you something else. We're having uh, foul problems here because Brasovich picks up number three. That's three on Brasovich, three on Clancy. They can ill afford to lose Clancy and Brasovich, and they are now at the limit of seven fouls here in the second half of play. So uh, West Virginia at the line. Greg Nance shooting from that line, 70%. But he didn't look like it on that shot. He just lowered his percent, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, it never fails. But whenever you mention that, it never fails. You mention it and the guy blows it. 36-31, down court we go. Pitt with a basketball on a five-point lead. 16-25, remain in the game. Boy, oh boy, it's nice to have you with us, and we give you what you come for every Saturday. Tight basketball, exciting basketball. Neverson. He doesn't get the luck of the Panther. West Virginia with the basketball. Greg Nance has it. That was perfect. Collins! Boy. They well, don't particularly want him handling the ball on the fast break, Collins. They'd rather have him give it to Lowe's more. And here's a good reason why the big man shouldn't handle the ball on the break. He's 6'9". <coughs> Came down, ended up carrying the ball when, in fact, he could have gotten it back to Lowe's Moore or Jones or Diego in the middle. He runs nice, but this is not track and field. 36-31, Pitt with the lead and the basketball. 16 minutes remaining in the game. These coaches are directing traffic, Edward. Don't you dare go anywhere. If it's anything like the previous six Saturdays, this game is far from over. Brasovich, and he's fouled. Fouled by Nance, it appears. That's who it is. Nance now has three. And three team fouls for West Virginia in the second half against seven for Pitt. You keep making reference to the coaches directing traffic. This Brozovich, I'll tell you, he goes to that hoop every time, Edward. Well, they're trying to cut uh, Ellis off very nicely here in the second half. He had 10 in the first half. Mountaineers are back in the zone now. Pitt can afford to be a little bit more deliberate than they have been. 15-35, Ellis, and he's fouled. It's almost when the ball gets in this area. When I was in the coaching business, I used to call this the target area. There's nothing they can do to stop you, basically. And there was an excellent shot of the man going up, taking the jump shot, good position, and the defensive man hitting him on the uh, arm, and now he's on the line shooting two. Coach, we're going to watch this foul situation for West Virginia. Sammy Ellis is at the line with his 72%. It rims out because uh, that's how they lost to Rutgers. They just had people fouling out as quick as you could say Jackie Robinson. And here they've got two on Moore, three on Nance. They've got two on uh, Mr. Collins, two on Todd, and three now on Gibson, who just committed this foul. They've become a little complacent defensively. Uh, whenever they go in that zone, uh, a couple of them stand around, and they get the ball in the wrong area, and they have to foul. 37-31. Neverson now has 14 points, 15-30 remains in the game. 
Never, uh, not Neverson, Ellis. Sammy Ellis with uh, 14 points to lead all scores. Steal by Ellis. Ellis with a big claw. And Pitt is back on the attack, 37-31. He's a bona fide all-league player, this Sammy Ellis. Uh, he, he radiates talent. And, uh, he's averaging 18 points a game, and he's going to hit his average today. Clancy. Foul by number 32, Donnie Gibson. And if it is, number four on Gibson. Pitt is attacking their defense very, very well. Uh, and every time down, they're either getting a good shot or they're getting a foul. That's four fouls on Mr. Gibson. Sam Clancy's been held to six points today, as you viewers can see. But I'll tell you, his mere presence uh, represents uh, about 30 or 40 points a game for Pitt. Amen. And that's the story. It isn't, uh, as Tim Gergerich would say, how many points Mr. Clancy scores, but his mere presence will do things to the opposition. Over and above that, he's a fine young man, too, Edward. He come over and spent some time with us before the game. He is a good he is a good human being. And you know, that's the first thing we talk about nowadays, not how great the uh, athletic ability is, but is he a good human being? And Clancy is inside now, a foul inside. Offensive foul on number 32. That'll bring a little reaction from the Mountaineer bench. Yes, sir, and he's out of the game. And here's exactly out of the game. why. There's a good look at it. Frizz has the ball in the corner. Lob pass in, and Brozovich has the good position, and it was an excellent call. It just brought Coach McPherson up off the bench uh, very quickly. We said we'd watch the foul situation. Donnie Gibson will come out. He has five, so he's through for the afternoon. Early shower with 15.02 remaining in the game, 38-31, pitting the lead by seven. There's a good shot of the Pitt Panther, Edward. Yeah, he's uh, he's been pretty busy today. He's been really igniting that crowd over there. I think he's been biting a few people on the knee. What happened to our man Tiger Paul? Is he in the arena today? <laughs> I haven't seen Tiger. My goodness, you know something? If we saw Tiger, though, we'd watch the bobbing heads because wherever he goes, the crowd follows him with a head motion like a tennis game. All the Eastern 8 viewers can take uh, a real good look at Coach Tim Gergerich here. He's, his team has the momentum. They're up seven. There's 15 minutes to go in the game. And he knows that this game is very, very important to the uh, Eastern 8 tournament. He wants that home court advantage. You know, the city kids uh, talk about him a, a lot with the coaches in the, around the high school area in Pittsburgh because he cares about the city kids. That cares about his kids. And, uh, boy, that's a, that's a good feeling to know that the kids can look up to a man that can respect Tyler. That's why he's going to be successful. And there they are to the inside again. Ellis. Sammy Ellis. Ellis has 16. He's averaging 18. He's moving in. 40 to 31. Pitt trying to blow it open with a nine-point lead. 14-40 remains in the game. There's a run and jump defense. They, they got him on the ropes now, and they know it. They're changing that run and jump to man. Greg Jones is in the ball game along with Joe Frizz for Lowe's Moore. There's Jones. Jones misses. Nance has the basketball, but there's a foul underneath. Looks like it might be on Sam Clancy. Ellis, number 52, and that's number two on Ellis. I beg your pardon. I got to tell you, there was a lump in Tim Gregory's throat that he went down to his big toe. He too. Yes, he did. Clancy was right in there with Ellis, and they called it on Ellis. 14-27 remain in the game. Back in the game comes number 32. 33, Russell Todd. Out of the game comes number 23, Diego McCoy. Todd back in, McCoy out. Todd is in the game now with Collins. This man, Greg Nance, who's shooting from the line. Joe Frizz and Greg Jones. That's the five for West Virginia as Nance moves the Mountaineers to within eight points, 40 to 32. Brasovich, Ellis, this man Clancy with the ball. Dwayne Wallace, who has it now, and Carlton Neverson, the starting five for Pitt in the game right now with a 40 to 33 lead. 40 to 33 Pitt, Brasovich to Clancy. They're getting a lot of mileage out of Brozovich, a freshman. Yes, sir. Never said. Hit. Dwayne Wallace everywhere. Look at the pass. Yes, sir. Nice pass, Dwayne. Oh, that's the way they teach it in the classroom. He saw Ellis breaking underneath, and boy, did he get it to him. 18 points for Ellis. He's averaging 18. Collins with a turnaround. Well, they can't fight in the second half. Greg Jones got to get some... They don't know how lucky that one was there. 
That's what you call the right bounce because it bounced right over to number 12 and he banked it in. 42-35, seven-point lead for Pitt. 13-35 remains in the game. Pitt's offense, they're bringing him out a little bit more now. You probably see a little bit of fundamental back door coming here soon. Bellas out high. WV using the man-to-man. Boy, Dwayne Wallace is playing a fine game out there for leadership. He fouls, offensive foul on Wallace, and Clancy gives him a rub on the head and say, nice try. Boy, they're the kind that hurt you. You know, there you are, you're sitting there, you got a seven-point spread, you've got the momentum going for you, and uh, player ends up committing a charge. Yes, indeed. And he knew it, too, and Clancy right away came over to him. That's the third foul on Wallace. Nine personal team fouls for uh, the Panthers in the second half. 13-15 remains in the game, 42-35, Pitt in the lead, in case you're just joining us along the Eastern Eight Basketball Network. Boy, and what a network. This, uh, this is the league of the future, Edward. You best believe it, too. Trying to force the ball inside, but Greg Jones is right jolly on the spot and gets it. And judging from this game, who was it that used to say the future is now, George Allen? He said that, and I believe it. Frizz throws a lot of bounds. Another turnover for West Virginia. They can't afford too many more of those with 12.53 remaining in the game. Four turnovers for West Virginia in the second half. Four. And, and you Pittsburgh know something? Head does not have one. You know something? And those four turnovers have come at crucial points when Pitt has uh, gained some points off of it. This happened one time in the first half, and uh, I don't know if we're going to get another look at this, but... That inside offensive player, and I remember a guy out, here's a tremendous look, and let me make a point. I remember a guy out your way, Eddie Alexander, John Wooten, always teaching his big men to keep both hands up high so they don't get called off for pushing off. And that's exactly what Sammy Ellis didn't do there. He had that one hand on his shoulder. The Wizard of Westwood. You're talking about the best that ever did it. And there's not many of us left either. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Nance will toe the line. Nance shooting from that there line, 70%. 42-35, Pitt in the lead. West Virginia trying to close it. They won't do it like that. Nance with the rebound. He misses. Where are we going now? Dwayne Wallace and off and running. Lancy. Ellis will try to, oh, he has it knocked away. Frizz threw his hands up as though he committed the foul. Let's see if it's on here, number 33. It was on Mr. Frizz. Joe Frizz with a foul. That's his first of the game, coach. I'm totally amazed at Sam Clancy. I really am. He he can do it all. He was leading the fast break there. Oh, with 12 29 remaining in the game. 42 for Pitt, 35 for West Virginia. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, this key here. Since Michelob Light. The rich, full body taste of Michelob Light. Compare it to any beer you like. This Michelob Light's one fine beer. Now, if I can only raise my scores. Hey, you want really high scores? Yeah. Go back to golf. Michelob Light. Compare the taste to any beer you like. Can you feel the difference between the 19 and 3 quarter cent Big Shaver and a Track 2? We went to the Cheeks of America to check it out. No difference. I can't tell the difference. Uh, to me, there's absolutely no difference. In our test, 58% found the Big Shave equal to or better than Track 2's. Yet four Big Shavers are an incredible 79 cents. Why spend more? Most men we tested felt. No difference. What about the price? Well, there's a look uh, behind the uh, pit uh, bench, and you know something, Coach? I'm still uh, waiting for Clancy to set that new park, that new mark in rebounding. Well, I'll tell you, he's close, and I think he'll get it today. And I, I, once again, I hate to keep giving the allocates out, but this coach, Tim Gergrich, has done an excellent job with Pitt. There, as, as our viewers can see, he just commands complete respect from his players. You can tell from the, from the monitor, and... Uh, just, just total dedication to the game of basketball. You know, right now, with his 15 and 8 mark, he is over the 500 mark in his coaching career. There's a winner, 72%, eighth in the nation, Coach Gail Catlett. What a winner he's been, 152 and 69. I had an interesting conversation with Gail prior to the game, and uh, as I told you, I hate to keep mentioning his record at 10 and 13, and if he doesn't get on the stick, it'll be 10 and 14 today. Ed, but he seems to think that the second year is the most difficult in the, re in the rebuilding of a program. And uh, he and his assistants, Lanny Van Eamon and Gary McPherson, have been out beating the bushes for uh, some high recruits for next year. 
We got Sammy Ellis back of the line now. He's hit his average, Ed. He's up to 18 points. Yes, sir. 12-29 remain in this game, and uh, don't go anywhere, folks. 42-35, because if this is any indication, this past six weeks has been real burners. I, was, I don't think it's going to be any different before this is over. 43-35, pit back to an eight-point lead. Nance just lays it in. Greg Nance now has uh, nine points on the afternoon. Nance, of course, is averaging uh, 13.6, nearly 14 points a game. He's got nine of them. Ellis is the man. They've got to stop for pits I, offense. I'll tell you what. We called it in the beginning of the game, the irony of the whole thing. It's, wait, it's taken till now to do it. They're in the box and one on Ellis. We kind of thought they'd open up with that, Ed. Well, they're aware now he's got 18 points, just like we are, as we look at number 33 for the Mountaineers, Russell Todd. 12-01, remain in the game. Ellis to Clancy. Hello. Neverson, almost a foul on Nance. Nance over the back, but they don't call it. Ellis now has 20 points. I'll tell you what, that's just not ordinary under there. Yes, indeed. Ellis with 21 points. Collins misses. He is. Look at Dwayne Wallace with a big pass. Oh, my. Pitt fans looking for a trip on free as they don't get it. Ball out of bounds. Pitt will, Pitt will lose the ball. West Virginia with the basketball now. Pitt fans wanting a little tripping a foul on that one. Frizz. Oh, boy, can he, can he call for rain? That's his first hoop of the second half, isn't it, Ed? Yes, he's got eight points. They need to get him the basketball if they're going to get back in this game. That's Rutgers. They got it to him in the first half uh, at the Rutgers Athletic Center last week, and he burned up the nets. 11-15 remain in the game. Neverson to Brasovic. It's kind of like getting all dressed up, not having anywhere to go. Can't see the basket's good, and he's fouled. I'll tell you, we're going to get an excellent shot of this sequence the whole way around. A good pick and roll from the top. Brasovic goes up. Ball off the glass, and here's the mere presence of Sam Clancy. Look at that strength. Yes, sir. They could have been hanging on his shoulders, and he'd have taken him up there with it. Well, yeah, you hang on and see, doesn't he take you? 47-39. Clancy trying to add to it. He's got nine points in the game. And nine rebounds, which makes him three away from the all-time pit record. We shall keep you aware. Yes, indeed. So don't go nowhere. 11-09 remain in the game. It's West Virginia basketball. Ellis now has four fouls, and we'll watch that one closely. Sammy Ellis, the big man offensively for Pitt with four fouls now. Ball out of bounds. West Virginia. Here's a name out of the past at the University of Pittsburgh, Brian Generalovich, who is directly ahead of Sam Clancy on the all-time point list. How would you like to have those two in a room when the winner come out? I'm just glad you were ahead of me in pronouncing that name. 47-39, <laughs> Pitt with a basketball. It'll be West Virginia's ball. Dwayne Wallace knocked it over the midcourt line. 10-40. 10-40. They wanted an over and back there, Ed. Pit basketball. Neverson off to the races, looking for teammates. He's got Clancy! Oh, what a great one that would have been if Clancy could have controlled it. West Virginia, Greg Jones out of control. He regains the ball, though. Russell Todd gets it in. Second time around, just like Love, 47-41. Pitt with a six-point lead. Gail Catlett is on his feet, hollering for his team. Both these coaches have a lot to be proud of with these clubs. Clancy, a little too soft. Brasovich has a knock out of his hands. Here we go, Mountaineer style. Oh, what a block by Wallace. And a steal. That's Hello. a great defensive play. Great oh. defensive play. Oh, that's why you see he's in the ball game, and when he was injured, Pitt offensively and defensively was hurting at the guard spot. Dwayne Wallace doing it right there. And he has no, showed no signs of being hurt in the game at all. He's not favored in the angle. Neverson bottled Clancy over to Ellis. He has 21 points. Oh, boy. <laughs> Offensive foul on Ellis. There's a way you need to learn how to block shots. Wallace has excellent position. He's up at the apex, puts the finger up, blocks it. Not only does he block the shot, but he comes up with the ball. 
And I can understand why Pitt struggled with him out of the lineup. They lost five of their last eight, and this young man's quite a player. McMillan coming in the ball game for uh, a foul plagued uh, Sammy Ellis now. Ellis got to come out of the ball game, and that hurts them offensively. He takes out 21 points with him. 47-41, Pitt with a six-point lead. 9-20 remain in the game. 9-19 remain in the game. Pitt does a good job changing defenses. They're in the man-to-man -man now. They're making West Virginia throw the ball around. Todd, Todd gets it in. He earned that deuce. You better believe it. Russell Todd, 6'7", freshman forward from Norfolk, West Virginia. Like you say, don't go away. We've got one here. 9.02 left, 47-43 Pitt. Hey, our Eastern 8 basketball television fans know about Eastern 8 basketball on Saturday. They're not going anywhere. 47-43, four-point Pitt lead. Rosevich. This is badly. West Virginia with the basketball. Here comes Greg Jones. Who does he want? Todd. Look at the tip. That's what you call second effort right there out of, out of uh, I think it was, was it Dago McCoy on that? That was Russell Todd. Or Todd, I'm sorry. Oh, did he have the big claw? 47-45. West Virginia creeping back into the pit. What do you call these, barn burners? Oh, white knuckler too, maybe, huh? Look at Brasovic on the pass from Dwayne Wallace. Great pass. That freshman's showing me an awful lot. I'm impressed with him. 49-45, Pitt back to a four-point lead. And eight back minutes. to a man, Ed. Eight minutes and seven seconds remain in the game. Don't go anywhere. It could be more than eight minutes and five seconds. <laughs> Joe Frizz, look at that. From downtown. Oh! Raindrops keep falling on our head. Ten points for Mr. Frizz. He had 17 against Rutgers on our Saturday game last week. Is this the way all of these Eastern eight games go? That's why I'm getting old. Neverson. Brasovic. There's that freshman again with the offensive board. Brasovic with the fingertip control. 51-47. Pitt with a four-point lead. 7-35 remaining in the game. They tell me that nobody recruited him too heavily. Apparently, Tim Gergerich saw something that a whole lot of folks missed. I'll tell you one thing, too. They didn't see Collins with the elbow on Brasovic's chin. We saw Brasovic with a loose ball. Neverson. Foul by Frizz. Foul by Frizz. Talk about production. Here's an here's tremendous execution on the break. Three on one, hits the open man, takes it right up off the glass, follows his own shot with second effort. 7-20 left in the second half. The score is Pitt 51, West Virginia 47. We'll be back in just a moment. Summit cookie bars, they're chocolatey with crisp baked wafers and crunchy peanuts sprinkled on top. After only one bite, you love Summit, cause it's peanuts, wafers, and peanuts, wafers, and light. Spig and Span presents Barefoot Clean. Barefoot. Americans love to go barefoot. Barefoot. And that calls for clean floors. Barefoot. I'm glad I use Spick and Span, because Spick and Span gets my floors barefoot clean. Spick and Span cuts through greasy, built-up kitchen dirt better than the leading liquids. Barefoot. Get your floors barefoot clean with Spick and Span. Barefoot. Well, talking about... Uh... Great basketball. You're going to see some more of it at the Rutgers Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey, next Saturday. And if that's not a barn burner, oh, I want to tell you something right now. Well, we just got some current information right from the official here. At number one, they've got a one and one foul over here and two technicals on Tim Gergerich, the pit coach. It goes back to those two words that we used in the beginning of the program intense rivalry. It's could be one of the best in collegiate athletics. 51-47, Pitt with a lead. 7-20 remaining in the game, and that was the little altercation near the Pitt bench. They were after Collins, Phil Collins of West Virginia. We didn't see how it began. We were looking at the foul on Frizz on the other side, and that'll be the one-on-one -on -one situation. Pitt will be at the line, and then, of course, the technical fouls will come, but there's Mr. Collins, and Collins was right in the, in the middle of the altercation, Coach. And, of course, Tim Gergerich was restrained from going after Mr. Collins. 
There's the foul shooting right there. Carlton Neverson. I'll tell you, this free throw shooting for the University of Pittsburgh has been pitiful today. It has killed them during the course of the season. Part of those eight losses are due to the fact that they have not been able to calculate points at that line. And of course, the booing is because of the technicals against Tim Gergerich. The Freers is shooting now, and unlike Neverson, he's making his first one, but he missed the second. Well, you just have your basic Eastern 8 basketball game <laughs> with 7.20 left, 51.48. I do know this, though. Pitt needs to regroup and settle down just a little bit because they still are in control. Well, now, Frears has made two. There's number three, and that has crawled West Virginia back into this game. It is now 51-50. Coach, tell our viewers why he got four shots there. Well, number one, he had the one and one to begin with, and then the two technical fouls over and above that. Had he made them, it would all of them, it would have been a tie game. There you have it. He made the front end of the one and one, missed the second, and got the two technical shots that were on Coach Tim Gergerich. And there's Tim right there. This is, a, this is going to be a critical possession here for West Virginia because Pitt has not been behind an awful lot in this ball game after 12-11. They've controlled it the whole way. Well, 7:20 remain. We kept telling you, don't go anywhere if you had plans to go shopping. You got to smile out. Don't of do it. There's Tim Gergerich. He's cooled off just a little bit with the towel. He needs to. He, he needs to wipe his head off with that towel because this is when they need him the most, right here. West Virginia with a basketball and trailing by only one point, 51-50. That's where we are. Seven minutes and seven seconds remain. Clancy with a steal. Clancy, hello. He misses. It's amazing, uh, Eddie, because Cream always comes to the top. That's a shame that Clancy missed that layup. Now well, Pitt fans are saying it's a shame, too. 6.50. Remain in the game, one point lead. Defense is what they're hollering. Well, Pitt's in that man to man, and it, there's a good call. Offensive foul on Frizz. Frizz knocked Neverson to the ground. Dwayne Wallace is hugging Neverson. Here's excellent defensive positioning. Joe Frizz, of course, gets the ball back, makes one fake to the left, runs right over the defensive player, and that's that basic positioning where he has the torso in front. Well, that call brought Tiger Paul out of the stands over there, We've Eddie. been wondering where he is. He's over there with the uh, shirt tails hanging, 51-50. Carlton Neverson taken to the line, 77%. And if you want somebody fouled on Pitt, it better be Neverson or Ellis because those are the only two that are really showing a respectable average. <laughs> yes, sir. The Pitt players know how important this game is. That's his eighth point. 52-50. Pitt with a two-point lead. Make it three. Well, that's, that gives them a little breathing room, Ed. At least it gives them two possessions now. 53-50. Unless, of course, we have a couple of turnarounds here. 6.35 remain in the game. Collins out high. Greg Jones has a block, but regains it. He misses. Clancy. Clancy there. There's that man Clancy again when it's tight. Boy, I'll tell you something. When you come to a pit game, you're going to say Clancy a thousand times. That's all it is to it. I think if I had a marble team, I'd want him on it. Hey, I'd want him on anything. Miss underneath by Neverson, but he's fouled. Fouled by uh, that man there, uh, uh, Phil Collins. Not that man there, Phil Collins. No. <laughs> that, okay, that's, that's the pit Panther. That's the Panther. Number 53, Collins, 608. Remain in the game, 53 for Pitt, 50 for West Virginia. We'll be back in just a moment. This month's the United States Budweiser Bobsled Team. This month's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, Budweiser's proud to sponsor the AAU Bobsled Team this winter. Here's to you guys, the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. I'm Football One, Mattel's lowest price electronic football game. And I'm electronic quarterback, Coleco's lowest price. I run from the line of scrimmage. I start in the backfield and follow my blockers. Blockers? I don't have any blockers. I got seven men on defense. Seven? I've only got five. I can even pass. 
I can't pass. My receiver runs short, long, any pattern. Pattern? I don't even have a receiver. Or I can score a safety. A I... safety? Coleco's electronic quarterback. A lot more football for the money. Well, as we take a look at the pitching section, West Virginia trailing by three. Tickets for the first round games in the Eastern Eight are now available at three league schools. Villanova, Rutgers, and Duquesne have already clinched first round home games to be played Tuesday, February 26th. Contact the school in your area for tickets. Get ready for the Eastern Eight tournament. It's coming your way, and Pitt fans, of course, hoping that they can clinch that fourth berth for the home court advantage, which begins February 26th, along with Duquesne, Rutgers and Villanova this afternoon, but they have a lot of basketball to play before they do. And you know something? You talk about the freshman, Brasovich. Boy, he's got nine points in the second half, Coach. And look at Frizz. Joe Frizz now 13 points for West Virginia. Brasovich, is, he, he's going to mature very, very quickly. I find it hard to believe that uh, not a lot of college people were after him. But, uh, Eddie, getting back to your uh, ticket promo on the Eastern 8 uh, basketball tournament, uh, send me two reserve seats. First thing in the mail. You got it, Coach, because I tell you, it's going to be something special. And if you want to get gray, make sure you're there. <laughs> Neverson will try to make it, too. He does. 55-50. Pitt with a five-point lead. 6.05 remaining in the game. 6.04 remaining in the game. But Pitt's back in their basic man-to-man -man defense. They're making West Virginia move the ball to get the good shot. Oh, Nance he underneath. He misses, and look at McMillan. McMillan with the rebound. I'm somewhat surprised Pitt's not looking for the break a little bit more. You know something? I thought Lowe's Moore had left town. He's back in the game now, number 11 for West Virginia. Moore only had two personal fouls, but uh, he's been out of the game for a while. I think West Virginia's going to have to make a decision here, too. So they're going oh, oh. to have to make a definite decision. They're, the... they're going to have to come out of that zone and chase that ball, Edward. McMillan made him uh, think about it. 57-50. He put up a rainmaker. 57-50. McMillan now has four points. Bad play, but Frizz saves it for West Virginia. Frizz. Collins is fouled. Collins fouled by Dwayne Wallace. He's kind of smiling, and so is Gene Steratore. They both caught one another. That's four personal fouls on Dwayne Wallace. Let's see now. Clancy has three. Ellis has four. And Brasovich has three. So um, Pitt's, Pitt is not out of the danger zone either. There was a good shot of Coach Gail Catlett and Gary McPherson, his assistant, talking to Joe Frizz because they know if they're going to get back into this game, they're seven down, they're going to have to go to the kid that can fill it up, and that's Joe Frizz. Well, this guy can score from the line, 72%. Phil Collins from Palace Heights, Illinois, 6'9", sophomore center. He's shooting 72% from that line, and you know something? Lowe's Moore has not scored in the second half. They need to get him the basketball to generate some offense if they're going to win this ball game. You best believe it. Collins made both of his 57-52. West Virginia down by five. Never saw That's the way to beat the press right there. That's excellent ball movement. Well, he reminds me of the old saying, you can't fight what you can't see. He went by everybody. Foul. Lowell's Moore will go to the line. That's a goaltending call. Is that goaltending? Sure. Once again, we've got an excellent shot of it here from our uh, remote unit. Sam Clancy's up. He gets his hand over the rim, but he hits the board. That's basically what happened right there. Sam slapped the board on the end. It also appeared that he got a little body, but uh, the official said no, no, just goaltending. 59-54. Pitt with a five-point lead. And West Virginia has the ball out of bounds. We're back live. Pitt turned it over. Yes, sir. We got a timeout. Gail Catlett knows that this one's within reach. Yes, sir. 446 remain in the game. 59 for Pitt. West Virginia 54, and we'll be coming back in just a moment. Mark? Hey, it's been ages. Can I buy you? Allow me. Two Michelob lights. Michelob makes a light beer? Perfect. The rich, full-bodied taste of Michelob light. Compare it to any beer you like. You always did go first class. Your ticket to San Francisco. Thank you. San Francisco? You too? Michelob Light. Compare the taste to any beer you like. Yeah. Can you feel a difference between the 19 and 3 quarter cent Vic Shaver and a Track 2? We went to the Cheeks of America to check it out. No difference. I can't tell the difference. 
But to me, there's absolutely no difference. In our test, 58% found the Big Shave equal to or better than Track 2s. Yet four Big Shavers are an incredible 79 cents. Why spend more? Most men we tested felt. No difference. What about the price? Big difference. Ed, Ed you were right when you said we're going to have a lot of fun. Here's an excellent fast break. There's a good outlet pass. One, two, does not hit the floor, up for the field goal, and if anybody's out there wondering how to beat a press, that's the way to beat it. Well, I'll tell you, the days when Dwayne Wallace has looked his best, I've kind of likened him to Magic Johnson. He sees all on the court. We saw him see Neverson on the fast break right there, and that's basketball. I'll tell you, that if you compare him to Magic Johnson, that's a tremendous compliment to him because there's, there's not too many of those around. There's uh, an interesting stat on the turnovers. Not only are these universities close in everything they do, <laughs> but look at the turnovers. West Virginia 18, Pitt 17. They make errors together too, right? 59-54, Pitt with a five-point lead. West Virginia with a basketball, 446 remain in the game. And don't you dare go anywhere. We're but, having more fun than Bob Cousy's having in Hawaii, I'll tell you that, Ed. Uh, we may not be as suntanned as he is right now, but we're having the fun. Look at Ness on a pass from Frears and Russell Collins. Collins. Collins, Johnny on the spot. Collins there. I'll tell you, the big fella could come on for the tournament, Collins. He's played real well today. At first, you don't succeed. You try, try again. And West Virginia got three shots at it. 59, 56, pit by three. Ellis with the basketball and four fouls. He'll have to play it cautious, coach. Well, they're going to they're sit on it just a little bit to get a good shot. Interesting note, West Virginia, it's the first time they full pressured all day. They're in their 1-2-2 two, two full court press. And Never. they're sitting back now hoping for a turnover. Well, Tim Gergerich has got the people that brung him, as you say, Neverson, Wallace, Clanson, Brasovich, and Ellis. Those are the five that started the game. They're in there for Pitt right now. Ellis has 21 points. He's three over his average. Clancy! Oh! He pulled the string to the inside, Eddie. 11 points for the big man. And a whole, and a whole barrel bushel of rebounds. He's getting close to the record. Pitt's playing a good hard man-to-man. -man. They're trying to get Frizz loose for this shot. They want him to uh, throw it up or let Moore's go, let Lowe's Moore go one-on-one. -on -one. He's got the hot spot. Todd, Todd misses. Nance with a rebound. Nance lays it in. That's a key field goal right there. Nance has 11 points. There's that West Virginia full pressure. It's a 2-2-1 full pressure. Boy, I'll tell you, Clancy knows how to handle that ball, too. Dwayne Wallace regains control of it. 3.05 remain in the game. 3.03, 61-58. Pitt with a three-point lead. Ellis with a basketball. Cannot do anything with it. Wallace, he brought rain. That's a tough shot to take when you got a three-point lead with 2.50 in the ball game. I was going to say, Tim Gergerich couldn't have called for that one. Frears loses the ball. That helped him out, Ed. Well, he had some help from the great Panther in the sky on that one. 2.40 remains in the game. Gergerich is up. He's going to call time and uh, give his players some final instructions. He's two minutes away from uh, the home court edge. 2.36 remain in the game. 61 for Pitt, 58 for West Virginia. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be back in a minute. The thing about him is he can, he can even play guard, play forward, play center. He just reminds me of their football teams in the 1930s. All they do is beat you. He plays a good job of human being, too, as we said earlier. They get the Mountaineers fired up on this end. 2.36 remain in the game. 61 for Pitt, 58 for West Virginia, and the game is far from over, folks. As you saw, Coach Gayo Ketlet sitting there. He's been in a lot of tight ones this season. Five overtime games. Boy, I tell you, if that doesn't put gray hair around the ears, nothing will. Pitts with the basketball, 61-58. They'll Gale, try to protect it. Gale anticipated that they were going to hold it a little bit. He's out on a man-to-man -man chasing. I can bet you last money. Ball stolen away by Nance. Fine hands by Greg Nance. Paid Goals off. more. It paid off, coach. West Virginia on the move, only down by three. 2.15 remain in the game. 2.14. 2.13. We're clocking it away. Lowe's more with the basketball. Nance says, I want it. It's in that good man to man, too. They're going to, uh, they're looking for Collins to the inside. There's been no question that. Well, the opponents have only been scoring 64 points a game from against Pitt. Look at Frizz. You caught it. You said it. Money in the bank. 15 points for Joe Frizz. He's the man they want. 61 60. Don't you dare move. 145 remain in the game. The first part of the game. <laughs> 
61-60, bit in a nail biter. 137 remain in the game. 136. Oh my. It's amazing, but it could boil down to free throw shooting. You bet your last money, and I'll tell you, you'd have to bet on West Virginia in that angle because Pitt is not shooting good free throws this year. Neverson, Dwayne Wallace, Brasovich, Ellis, and Clancy. Our fans can see that we're going to put the running time of the game up as 1 12, 11. We're going to take them down. This is nail biting. Who's going to come out of the sack first? We'll find out in about a minute and three seconds. Why, when I tell you, when Pitt and West Virginia jump into the hole, why well, they go for it all, don't they? 55 seconds remain, 54. Oh, Wallace! Oh, Wallace. They, yeah, Dwayne Wallace. Oh, with an excellent drive. Your local cement company, you find a hole and you fill it. Wallace found one. Nance is fouled by Brasovich. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Dwayne Wallace looked over at Brasovich and said, don't give it to him, don't let him get back to the line now. Well, I'll tell you this, Eddie, it's amazing, but Pitt controlled the ball for about a minute and one second there. Dwayne Wallace, of course, has not played. He's awful tired coming over to the side. Made an excellent drive and did not have an easy shot to put them up three, and uh, the Mountaineers are on the line with two. Boy, I'll tell you something right now, and they shoot free throws very well, and as you said, it could come down to who toes that line right there best, and Greg Nance is gonna get his shot as we look at uh, Catlett and his assistants along the West Virginia Mountaineer bench. Wonder if Gale loosens his tie every time they have an overtime game. Tim Gregorich down here looks like Satorial Splendor. He's got... And it's and as far as all the local stations along our Eastern 8 Basketball Network are concerned, we haven't forgot you. You're not a lost child. We'll get you your commercial at the end of the game, okay? Stay with us. 63-60. Greg Nance is going to try to close in on the Panther in just a bit. Nance already has 11 points. Uh, Ed. They're distributed pretty good, too. Lowe's Moore has nine, none in the second half. Well, they're both of the two that uh, are in double figures to begin with on his club. So, you know, there again, it runs according to pattern. Frizz has 15. He's a firecracker out there. Collins has seven. Todd has six. And Jones has four. That's close. You know something, Coach? Watching him from that line, that's the way they teach you to shoot free throws. Take your time. Concentrate. Follow through with the wrist, and it'll hit the net just like that. 37 seconds, one point. 63, 62, West Virginia with a steal. Lowe's more. He's got the lead. West Virginia, just like that, in the lead. 64, 63. Holy Toledo. That's why they call it the great game of basketball in the Eastern Eight. Lowe's Moore hit a key field goal there under pressure. He could give the Mountaineers a two-point spread here, but there's a lot of time left in this game, Eddie. 32 seconds is a lifetime. Well, I'll tell you something, though. We talked about the man that I like most, Momentum. And yes, he has sir. sure shifted to Morgantown, West Virginia. Pitt has made a sub at this time. John Ryan's in the ball game. You talk about uh, double figures? Lowe's Moore now has 12 points. Well, those last two were the important ones. Clancy to Ellis, the big man with 21 points. Ellis, he's fouled. Fouled by Phil Collins. Collins. Well, we've got 21 seconds, an awful lot of time. Pitts down a deuce there on the line. And uh, Sammy Ellis is coming to the line. Well, that's the man they want at the line because he is shooting 72%. <laughs> there are not many people that you can take down to... Liberty Avenue in Pittsburgh and brag about the free throw shooting, but one of them happens to be Sammy Ellis and Carlton Neverson both shooting over the 70 mark. We got a timeout. Timeout, West Virginia. 21 seconds remain in this here game, at least regulation part of it. 65 for West Virginia, 63 for Pitt. Oh, yes, indeed. 21 seconds, we told you, way back at the opening tip off. Don't go anywhere because we remember back on February the 2nd. It was 68 for West Virginia, 66 for Pitt. And we remember last year, same thing. Let's take a look. 93 for Pitt, 92 for West Virginia. In the, in the uh, second go-round, 
72 for West Virginia, 57 for Pitt. They know how to get in the trenches, don't they? Well, I'll tell you, it's an interesting, uh, an interesting story here. There's 21 seconds left to go in the game, and Pitt has four timeouts remaining, whereas West Virginia is down to one. So uh, it's crucial. What's he doing, Coach? Gail Catlett is anticipating that they're going to make the free throws. He is telling his inside people to box out, keep them off the boards in case they miss. If they do make it, set up against the pressure, get it in and take your time and get it down. I'll tell you one thing right now. He sure is making them think about that foul shot by calling that timeout. See, I, I never had a problem like this in <laughs> black coach. With 21 seconds to go, I used to call timeout. Tell them to give it to Norman Van Leer and Kevin Porter and get out of the way. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Cincinnati used to do that with Oscar Robertson years ago. But you know something, these are the kind of games where I wouldn't want to be a head coach because my zipper on my shoes would not stay up. Oh, this is a fun part of it, really. This this is Eastern 8 at its best. I'll tell you, you your conference can't miss. It's it's, go, it's going to be one of the daddies. Well, it's built by leaps and bounds because of things like Commissioner Leland Bird. Does People a like fine to, job. He's a quality person. Oh, I'd like to have him the captain of my ship. Of course, well, his background uh, is one of uh, athletics. You know, he's a great All-American at West Virginia. Former basketball coach at Glenville, athletic director at Miami Dade, West Virginia, and now the Eastern Eight. Well, I'll tell you the big compliment for Leland Bird when he was at West Virginia. Ooh, an in and outer off the glass. And that'll kill you. That'll kill you right there. But the big thing is Commissioner Bird was two times captain of the Mountaineers, so he was the leader of the ball club. This is critical here, Ed. He, he needs this. Oh, you better believe he needs this. All right. He got it. 65, 64, round and round we go. Where she stops, nobody know at the moment. Bowls more with the basketball. Time. The Mountaineers with the lead. 15 seconds to go in the game. You see it at the top of your screen. Frizz guarded heavily. And a foul on number 20. Darrell Gissendanner committed the foul for Pitt. Eight seconds remain in the game. He had to do that. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I don't know that I would have fouled Joe Frizz. 73% to the line, and this man has not missed in the last five or six games. He has been the lows more of the Mountaineers the last four or five, six games. Of course, I'll say this to you. He needs them both because, as I mentioned to you earlier, Pitt has four timeouts left. You see Joe Frizz there with 15 points. But you know something? He's come back home. He's come back home to try to knock a nail in the Panther coffin because he's from right down the road at Coriopolis. So he's come back home. He's trying to put a, put a nail in the hometown guy's coffin. Frizz, ice water in his veins, as they say. 67, 64, five seconds to go in the game. Four seconds, hello. It's time out with one second on the clock. 67, 66, does Pitt have any time? to get the basketball back. I don't see him getting any time, Coach. I'll, I'll tell you this. There, there, there could conceivably be about two seconds on that clock, uh, Eddie, because it, I watched it as he made the hoop. It, uh, it just turned. Well, Ellis exactly had the timeout sign given to the officials at two seconds. Well, that's a tough task for that official to call that, but there's a good shot of the board. It's an excellent drive, and if you can watch the board as well as the layup, one good dribble, takes the good spring, gets it in off the glass, and you'll hear see him call time right away with Gene Steratore blowing the whistle right on the monitor. Yeah, you see Ellis in the corner? Right over here. He was given the sign as two seconds was there, so. Well, there could be two seconds on the clock, even though it shows one, because it just turned right when he called it. 67, 66, Pitt Panther fans right now wondering, do we have time to get a steal and a bucket? Well, they've, they've got but no choice now, basically because they've got to front every man, and they've got to make them turn it over on the inbounds pass. Because once the fella touches the, touches the ball, that's when the clock goes. Exactly. It does not begin till they touch it. Well, 67-66, and the pressure is on the Panthers because Villanova comes tooting to town, king of the hill next week, and then they have to travel to Piscataway, New Jersey. You'll see that game right here along the Eastern 8 Network next Saturday, and if you don't think that that's going to be a tough place to play basketball, the Rutgers Athletic Center. I had the opportunity to watch a pro game in there not too long ago, and... Uh... They get down on you. They, uh, you know, they're they're pretty vocal. Somebody asked me once if if they if they have a tough time winning on the road at Rutgers and St. Bonaventure. I said, the only thing I can tell you, does a woman wear high heels? It's tough. <laughs>
Well, I'll tell you, let's not lose sight of this one. They got, they got one second left. Pitt has to make them turn the basketball over, or their record goes to four and four in the Eastern Eight, and West Virginia closes out the Eastern Eight year with four wins and six losses. And that gives a guy in George Washington thoughts that maybe, maybe, just All maybe. the West Virginia coaches are on, Ed. There's Coach Catlett and McPherson. They're all praying. Yeah, everybody's on their feet. Everybody but John Clark, Stu Kaufman, our stunt man, and yours truly, Eddie Alexander. That's because we have to sit down. <laughs> well, they, they don't have a man on the ball. They're doubling up on more. They threw it long. Well, good. Ball game's over. It's a good ball game. Good ball a, game for the Eastern 8 Network. Eddie. Excellent ball game. 67-66. West Virginia, a winner over Pitt. That's the end of the game. Again, 67-66. We'll be right back with the wrap-up in just a moment. Now pause for you local stations to take your break. If you took all the great moments in sports... Right now, Coach John Clark. It's just your basic Pitt-West Virginia game. One-point game, 67-66. Everything was true to form. Ellis had 22 points. Neverson, uh, 15. Clancy only had 11, but his mere presence radiates class on the lineup. And uh, the Mountaineers earned a good win today, Eddie. I enjoyed being with you. Tell you one thing. I'm from Missouri. You had to show me. And, boy, I'll tell you, I'm not going to take these earphones off. The ACC over Maryland. And LSU defeated Kentucky in the Southeast Conference. Notre Dame finished its regular season with a win over Dayton. Oregon State beat Oregon. UCLA a winner over California. Louisville wins the Metro over Florida State tonight. LaSalle East Coast defeating St. Joseph. And DePaul was a winner over Illinois State. So the losers are going to wait for the bids, like Pitt and Duquesne, awaiting the NIT word tomorrow. The winners now head on to the NCAA tournament, which this year will take 48 teams. The NIT will invite 32 teams. In the Wildcats locker room after the game tonight, Coach Roley Massimino is happy that his season will continue. Thank you very much. I thought our kids play, played superbly. I think we controlled the tempo of the game, even though you did pick West Virginia. Uh, with 20 victories, I couldn't believe it. We were the underdog. But unfortunately for West Virginia, I thought our kids were just great. You know something? There's one thing that we enjoy, and I'm sure the people along the television network enjoyed, your undressing act after two games. Well, I didn't take my jacket off tonight, as a matter of fact. I was very calm and very subdued. I thought that uh, after watching myself on television last night, uh, I think I definitely have to stop eating in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Let me ask you one other question now. We saw the awesome force of your two big guys, Bradley and Pannone. Have they played better this season? Not very, very often. I thought they were superb because they wanted this game more than anything. We got beat down there at West Virginia, and this was something that we really wanted to, to overcome and get into the NCAA tournament without backing in, and that's what it's all about. Well, 13 straight, and now it's over. Here's the Cinderella team in the Eastern 8 Finals, West Virginia. They just couldn't pull off another upset, though. Tonight, Villanova was the winner, capturing its second Eastern 8 championship, 74-62, the final score. West Virginia never had the lead in this ball game. Villanova thus becomes the first repeat winner of an Eastern 8 championship. They've won two out of three tournaments and will go now on to the NCAA National Tournament. West Virginia's Lowe's Moore was named the tournament most valuable player. He scored 75 points in three games, 22 of them tonight. Villanova had a 15-point lead at times tonight. The Mountaineers went to work in the second half, cut it to five and six, but could get no closer. Alex Bradley with 24 points led the Wildcats. John Pannone had 20. A big night of college basketball, finals of several major tournaments to decide the teams that will go on to the NCAA tournament. One of those battles, the finals of the ACC. about it as they should have done. Yeah. Well, well, it wasn't one of the good guys. Right? Right on the outside, this is Pannone. Steal by Friends. Joe Friends. Goal tending. Got the basket. Sparrow. Goal tended. The good defensive play by Joe Friends has made it 8-6. Villanova. Good anticipation. This is why you don't want to leave your feet to make the pass. You want to pull it back, it's too late once you open a year. Nice defensive play, but no question about the call. There's the pressure, the attempt to double the ball by West Virginia this time. Both teams pressuring. By running, West Virginia looking for a tie. Frizz. Both clubs are really hopped up. They really are moving. Sinkowitz on the right side. Benetrade got it inside. And 
Cornell gets his first two points of the game. Nice pass by Sinkowitz. Bob and I commented a lot about that youngster's court sense last night. He really is a smart player, Bob. Yes, he is. Excellent shooter. Has a traveling violation. No question. Good call. Sometimes you can get hopped up too much, Bob. And well, it'll take a while for that adrenaline we were talking about to kind of ease just a bit and the players to start you know getting back their poise you're absolutely right they come out of that locker room they rip those doors down getting out with the saliva dripping out of the corners <laughs> of their mouth and that you know you don't always function at your best when you're that high but uh defensively they're really working at it so far well that happened last night really for uh, greg vance oh good play oh uh, is that a fine play rebound by collins well, as they blow the layup that's a shame a little pick and roll move both teams now have taken a shot at blowing a layup Last night in the semifinals against Rutgers, Vance, the number one rebounder for West Virginia, came out so fired up, he got three quick fouls. Well, this is a problem for West Virginia. Uh, Villanova, a better shooting team, both from the field and from the free throw line. They outshoot them by about nine percentage points. So we said this last night, the same thing applies. If it goes down to the wire, Villanova would have an edge from the line. Leading jump shot. A battle on the boards. Picked out. Picked up by Frizz, who got it to Collins. Good and job. Collins with a left hand. What a shot over Bradley. And it's a 10-8 game. Villanova's lead is cut to two. We have pressure in the backcourt. He gave the head and shoulder fake in the traffic, and that's exactly what you want to do when you're in the middle of the pack. you got to fake a few times. Canone misses his shot, and over the shoulder, Aaron... Aaron Howard over the top. Collins had good position. Foul on Howard. And West Virginia will come down now with a chance to tie again. There it is. Here's the penetration. Missed jump of Howard, as you can see, trying to keep it alive. Gives Zoe Collins a, a shot there in the back of the head. 15 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Good ball game.